Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, M.L. Elrin as the soul of Detroit. Cal Porter and Associated Johnny. What's up, Cal? Remember the Kilpatrick case about 1945? Kwame Kilpatrick, you're reporting. We set him up for a 1 to 10 hitch. Public corruption. Yeah, sure, I remember him. And Donald Trump's. Noising about that you're the top of his shopping list. Oh, I've heard that kind of talk before. Well, all I know is he's not here in Hartford visiting grandmother. We'd like to have you on a payroll for a few weeks just for safety's sake. Keep an eye on him for us. Probably the easiest money I've ever taken, Cal. If I remember Mr. Gilpatrick, he'll have his eye on me. <laughs> Hey kids, it's your old pal, M.L. Elric, welcoming you to our 250th episode, a milestone in broadcasting that goes to show that this medium is unregulated, there's no quality control, and as long as you're willing to hang out with, in a basement with two other dudes on a regular basis, you can go forever. But you would think by now, you'd think by now I would know, don't start talking about the smell of decomposing bodies just before you're ready to go. But I'm not going to take the blame for that. I have to blame our special guest, Erica Erickson, for getting us off onto a really... Uh, more really to start this morning topic. or today. Yeah. And I said, what made you think about decomposing homeless people? And she said, I'm sitting across from Sean Windsor. <laughs> oh. I've got nothing. <laughs> you wouldn't do you. What's you know, that? You always have nothing. No, no, it's true. I have no idea why I'm even here. How the f heck did I make it 250 shows? So Sean is the newspaper guy. Right. And he's the one guy bitching about his lighting. I'm As not you complaining can, about the lighting. No, I'm saying no lighting is going to make make it worth looking at me. Just oh, yeah. Just Turning off the me. lights. Read me. That'll fine. improve things. Read me. Listen to me. I want to know uh, about the Camaro out in the street. And we were talking about dead bodies, but what's what's going on with the Camaro out there? <laughs> nice try. I don't, was that a transition? I don't know. Yeah. Why don't you just give the license plate number? First off, congrats on 250. Hey, Woo! who saw this coming? Who saw this coming, Fox GM? What? Sorry. They slip into something. And Mark Fellhauer's here too. 250 episodes. Hello. You he's, can tell he's, he's not happy either. Why am I not happy? Bubbling over with enthusiasm. Know. Why aren't you happy? Yeah, um, it gives us a jolt of energy, and Mark's like, yeah. No, I've been dealing with tech issues. So. Oh my God. Come on, <laughs> what? What? Well, we got the heavy metal over here. It's great. She's, you know. <laughs> I know. She does bring a lot of energy. Hello, she right? does. <laughs> it, it, this show's not used to it. Well, I mean, there was a what? there was a show before the show. Those two were over there just chatting away. And, and you Can ended, you and I leave then? Apparently, yeah. Uh, but you ended up... Why were you guys talking about dead bodies? Because Sean was complaining about his lighting, and I said, normally when you see a complexion like that, oh. you're in a mortuary. Okay. And yeah, so Sean, then we started talking about the smell of, of dead bodies, and as, you know, reporters, you see, we've seen scenes, but... Oh, yeah, and smells. And smells. I mean, we smelled smells. Yeah, I, I always tell my students when you're writing a profile, you're writing a story, go out there and, and bring all your senses into the story. The one that we usually debate whether it's appropriate is, is taste. You know, it's just like you're interviewing somebody. I want to know what they look like. I want to know what the room is like. I want to know if, if, if the, what the smell is like, but don't taste them. That would be... It's... Bad. Yeah, there, there was a... There was a scene I was out with, and there was an intern with me, and she projectile vomited right oh. away. It, it was, I, I, in her defense, it was very potent, uh, and yeah. he had been there for a while. Stings the nostrils. Yes. Oh, and yeah. you could taste it. Oh. Oh, and it was, it's, it lingered. Yeah. I think for days. <laughs> I, I've been told at this point, like elderly gentlemen such as myself, most of our taste does come from our nose, not from our tongues anymore. And we were at a whiskey, uh, VIP whiskey tasting for everybody who supported the Clark Park uh, charity hockey game. Did you use your tongue? <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, to drink the whiskey. But Eric Olson, who is the proprietor at Thomas McGee's, explained to everybody. He had everybody taste the whiskey and asked. There were men and women. What did you taste? And the women had a much more vibrant um, description. And he said, that's because 
women have twice as many taste buds as men. Is it also quite really? possible that they were just taking it way more serious than the guys were because they just wanted to drink the whiskey? I don't know. That's a good thought. I, I was I was here to uh, to stand up for women having more powers than men, but I guess if you want to take, take them that. down, Mark. Then, you know. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going with that. You saw right through me. Misogynist. What are you talking about? Bad wow, thing. that's rich. What a rough start to today. That's Go rich. Ahead. Yeah, it's rough, hard to believe we made 250 this way. Yeah. No, no let's keep talking about dead bodies. There's a place <laughs> outside Knoxville that's called the Body Farm where they... A the, body farm. Yeah, it's yeah. a it, it's a it's scientific. I mean, it's an academic enterprise about sort of studying how bodies decompose in various states, and it has wow. to do with forensics, I think, and that sort of thing. Have yeah. you been to this body farm? No, but I read a great story on it. I don't know, a couple of twenty years ago or so. And I, the line I remember, they were the writer was describing the area and how pretty it was, and he said this would be a nice place for a picnic if he <laughs> if he hadn't gotten here first, and he was of course a corpse. Oh, well, that's nice. I bet it's That haunted. line always stuck with me, though. What's that? I, you looked over at me as if I'd said, no, I, I just was thinking to myself, when Sean said, let's talk more about dead bodies, I think he meant that sarcastically, like, like, let's not do that. And then he brings up a story about the body farm. Yes, I think you want, I think it's probably haunted. That'd be cool. Well, there's a really yeah, fascinating, that would be cool. There's a fascinating book called Stiff. Has anybody ever heard of the book Stiff? About Don't you, say it, Mike. It's not a, oh, I have not heard I'm, about the I'm, book named Stiff. It's about uh, preemptive strike there for Mike. It's about human cadavers and what happens after somebody dies, and, and there's a whole chapter, I believe. I believe is that book is about the body farm. <laughs> he's I trying. I, he's, I know. He, he, he's, he's he's dying. We are not going to make 251 episodes. We yes. have, but I will tell you why we're yeah, here. I think we are here of because dead, this podcast. Is, yeah, we've killed it. Yeah. Rest well, it's maybe maybe we're whistling past the graveyard because we know we shouldn't have made it this long. But we are here because of Dr. Yaldo and the Yaldo Eye Center and what they can do to give you better than perfect vision. And if you are, uh, as some of us, you know, uh, seasoned veterans, a.k.a. old farts, uh, they do have a way to help you see near and far with a very simple procedure. We'll tell you how to get that done and where to get that done a little later in the show. Luke Nowacki also sponsors, like, like Dr. Yaldo, all the shows here on the Red Shovel Network. He will help you prepare for a more secure financial fe- future. He's the one who can help you come up with a plan so that when you retire, you can retire gracefully, like after 250 episodes, perhaps. <laughs> and Zot Ford, if you, uh, you need to haul a body... <laughs> they got some F-150s They got some F-250s And if it's a body I need a giant transit van Yeah, if it's a body That you couldn't get out of the house Because What's... on one of those reality shows They have the F-350 With the duallys in oh, the back boy. So they'll get the big boys out of there <laughs> They'll get your They'll get your biggest losers Down the road Your, your Walter Hudsons That's right And uh, and of course The most important part of this show Is I mean after me Is you and we appreciate you listening and continuing to sponsor us with individual donations. And, of course, our Patreon subscribers, they are the ones who are able to watch this show right now. For just 5 bucks a month, you can see an ad-free video version of the show. You can hear an ad-free version of the show. It posts before everybody else gets it. And you can, uh, you can enjoy the camaraderie and, of course, our esteemed guests like Eric Erickson. You can't do better than all ease, which is why we have you here because... You know, we like to have. We Thanks like to for have having stars me back, you guys. Show. It's always good to hang out with you guys. Oh, it's nice to have you. I'm still stuck on Mike saying that he was the most important part. And I thought I was just, just reading that. I thought that was in Wikipedia. Oh, was that, or is that just in a script? It's in the. Uh, Doesn't George Costanza say, you know, yeah, he does. Y- yeah. You believe lies. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good point. Makes them true. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a lie as long as you believe it. Yes. <laughs> wow, I guess I'm not as excited about Erica being here as I thought. Oh, that was a minute. <laughs> A minute ago. What are you talking about? She just fired off a Seinfeld reference. That's gold, man. I got a Seinfeld reference for later in the show, too. We get, we or No, no, no. Not for later in the show. For uh, Erica is going to stick around, and we're going to do a special Ask Erica bonus episode for our Patreon subscribers, where we're going to get her take on some very important questions. And there's one question I want to get to that's very, very Can you give us a hint? In. Uh-oh. Oh, you mean a tease for next week, Sean? Yeah. Can you give us a hint? Oh, geez. Let me see here. Now, you, now you're throwing me off, off stride here. I had a plan. All right. Now this is going to change. Oh, we had a plan. Right. But no, we, we, were, we, we had such a good time well, last year. You have we a good here, memory. Erica, that we're like, we got to have Erica on again as soon as possible. And somehow it's still been like three months. So what have you been doing I'll since I'll just start showing up. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Please. Yeah, I'll just start showing up randomly. 
That sounds pretty good. You're more often than Sean. That's. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. I don't know if you guys watch. I mean, this is also another sad thing. But I was I, I was talking to a friend in that Your bodies. Qu- quiet on the set. Uh, yes. Nickelodeon was oh, on I've Investigation Discovery. It, yeah. yeah, it's so sad. Wait, wait. Nickelodeon what? has a true crime show? Well, there was a true crime uh, series of episodes about Nickelodeon. It's called Quiet on the Set. Oh, okay, okay. What was going Discovery. on? A guy named Dan Schneider, you might remember from Head of the Class, he was the fat guy on Head of, a, Head of the Class. He wrote, could be taken out in the F-350 if you found his body. Exactly, but he wrote... There you go. All gooey. Sure. Yeah, we don't shoot sorry, a bad joke in. Um, especially we're talking about this, such oh, yeah, a serious sorry. topic. But he went on to write a bunch of the hit um, sitcoms that were on Nickelodeon, be those um, the Amanda show with Amanda Bynes, it seems to get a lot of the attention. Uh, is it Drake and Josh? I, yeah, I'm a Drake little, Bell. I'm a little too old for some of these shows. The Sweet Life of Zach some and dudes. Cody. Oh, right? Zach and Cody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there was a lot of uh, misbehavior, and it borders on illegal. It's just a lot of creepy behavior. Did you watch the whole thing, Erica? I didn't. See, I have one more to go, but it's pretty bad. And and there was another guy, Brian Peck. Brian Peck, and that that now now you're getting into the legality of it all because Brian yeah. Peck was a convicted sex convicted, offender. Convicted, yes. Who was allowed to continue to work on those shows as a dialogue coach and he at the up- Children's Network. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there were a bunch of creepers, basically. Bunch of creepers. It, it's it's a, it's tough to watch. It's hard it's to rough. stomach. Yeah. It really is. Damn. And I, I recommend it, it though. If, I, I remember when Nickelodeon was, uh, you can't say that on television, and people would have green slime dumped on their head if they said the wrong thing. But uh, Yeah, you, you're not going to look at stuff. Nickelodeon the same. So if you want to keep that outlook, I wouldn't recommend it for you, ML. Damn. There were a lot of jokes of like squirting in, in girls' faces, like toothpaste or lotion or whatever, which is just synonymous. And that he had a foot fetish. Oh and then, God, you know, yeah. the, I have heard about the foot fetish guy. He had a, he, yeah, that's Dan Schneider, and he had a pool shaped like a foot. And, you know, the logo, the, mm-hmm. the Nickelodeon logo was a foot for a while. And yeah. when, it's just all these nasty things that people are kind of putting together. When Me Too uh, happened, that big movement, he was actually outed a little bit in that, and he went back through his tweets and deleted all these tweets of feet because he would just sit there and tweet out women's feet. It's was like, oh, this is a bad look. So we went Oh, I back. didn't even know that. Yeah, uh-huh. What is the attraction of feet? Because I know there are... Everybody, don't, don't kink shame them. No, but there, there are... Right, oh, I mean, if I like that's his that. thing, that's fine, but, you know, don't Did mess with kids. Up? <laughs> no, that, I'm being, I'm being somewhat facetious. Oh, but that's. But I, I mean, like yeah, that. if that's his thing, whatever. Teach their own, but don't mess with kids. But have, have you, that's, that's what. Yeah, don't. Have use you had kids a problem with this because I, I know there are websites out there where they're dedicated to women's Kinks. anchor women's feet. Yeah. Yes. On the set where oh. you'll you'll go there and it'll be an anchor woman will be there yes. sitting in a chair and there's of course the cross legs creeps but there are people just like. You know, um, so and so's feet. You know, here's Nora. Here's Nora McDonald's feet. I'm like, it's really feet? crazy. Feet. I know. Even there's also a there's special accounts for yeah. women wearing boots. Yeah. Or well, heels. Yeah, it's, yeah. Or just open toed shoes. <laughs> it's so and specifically I know. Weird. And I don't know. My friends and I will get messages from people asking. For pictures of feet, or do they want to oh. buy the shoes? Can you sell your shoes no, like that? That's do you, like what a do you creep do? Do you bay where you can, can you just put your used sandals out there. You... Oh, <laughs> can we report? I mean, I don't know. Oh, well, is it illegal? I mean, it's not illegal. It's just really creepy. And if we took the time to report all these people, we that would that'd be a full time job. I don't get the feet thing. So, so what goes on in this? Is it just just all the behind the scenes stuff? How it was so. Yeah, well, I guess my point was I was watching this episode and a friend of mine from Traverse City was watching and there was a trailer for another show that came on. I I can't remember when we went on this tangent, but that's okay. But no, this was, we were asking about what you've been doing and you are in a true crime uh, series. That's right. right. She's my friend from from up north because I used to uh, be a reporter and anchor up there. Nine and 10, right? Seven and four news. Damn it. You were close. (laughs) There's only two. (laughs) I got both of them wrong. (laughs) She said, I think I just saw your doppelganger on Investigation Discovery. I said, you know, it, could, it may have been me, actually. I'm not sure. That's how random I do things. 
So I was talking to Investigation Discovery. I was interviewed about this really sad story. Another <laughs> very sad topic. Sorry. No, it's okay. It just we can looks keep so talking about down pedi- over there. No, no, no. Let's no, that's just normal pedi- look. Let's t- keep talking about pedophilia. That'd and dead bodies and <laughs> I don't now mind, a murder. I don't mind the dead body stuff. Yeah, all of a sudden the basement <laughs> doesn't smell so bad. Right. <laughs> just thinking smell about is bad down here anymore. decomposing. No, uh, I'm still stuck. I'm, I can't get... Eric had a great line pre-show. I, I hope I'm not going to get in trouble for repeating it here, but... Because <laughs> since so it's been a show... I'm going to do it anyway. No, since it's been a show about fetishes. No, well, how did you put it? Google the ugliest thing about yourself and you'll find a fetish? Yes. If you're feeling bad about yourself, just <laughs> Google the ugliest thing about you and I guarantee you someone finds that attractive. See, that's uplifting. If, if now that's if, uplifting. If you're a woman. <laughs> I think that's the caveat. No, if you're you a guy to too. I, there's oh. someone for everyone. Exactly. No, I, I know See, that. that's the kind of positivity I was looking for. That's, this is... Uh, you know, building people's self-esteem is one of the things like we I do. Like I said, that, that couple who drinks see, their own urine together... There's someone for everyone. Hey, whatever Sorry, makes Sorry, I don't happy. want to gross everyone so, out. I don't that's know. a new Mountain Dew. That's, oh, oh, or a couple, it's like the story. Yellow alert. A couple taking the placenta and put it in the freezer. Oh, for and Christ's then, sake, And then Sean. breading it a year later and sautéing right, it. and then what? eating it. Wait, no yeah. one, wait, no one breads it. I know it someone who did that, that. Would you tell Mark that that used to be a thing? No, I know no. someone who did that. Wait, they breaded it and sautéed it. They cook no, it. They, Bullshit. They, they make it into pills. I'm exaggerating a little bit with the breading. No, they make it into pills. No, they literally cooked it and ate it. And Erica knows What are you talking about? I once saw a guinea pig do this. Tell Mark, please tell Mr. Naive Boy over here. There's apparently some... Yeah. But why do you have to saute it? What are you breading it? Too? No, you get high. I, apparently, you what? Oh, you get smoke, high. Smoke a little bit. And no, then, I uh, didn't know you. That wait, what? That's before you eat anything. You light some candles. <laughs> now you know why the butchery doesn't advertise with us sure, anymore. You make sure you got open-toed shoes on. No, seriously. <laughs> oh my God! What the hell are you talking about? Uh, this, the smell I'm of pepper rambling. spray hangs in the <sighs> air. <laughs> So you're on this discovery show. There was a okay. So <laughs> there's a there's a show what called is? Mean Girl Murders, and I talk about this sad case out of Warren. Uh, I th- it was in 2018 at Fitzgerald High School. I'm not sure if you remember ML. M and M's old high school. Wait, is it ML or Mike? I'm so confused. She's on a roll, Placenta boy. <laughs> Get some breadcrumbs and prepare a snack. Let the woman talk. <laughs> <sighs> we're having a, uh, we're gonna do our own real reality show. Okay, mean sorry, podcaster back to, back to, boy. Back to stabbings, please. Uh, Danaya Gibson, I, th- I think I'm saying her name right. I can't. I, Tana, Tania Lewis got 27 years. She was only 17. She was like an honor roll kid. Stabbed another girl, 16 year old Danaya Lewis, or excuse me, Danaya Gibson in class. And honor roll girl stabbed honor roll, somebody. Both of them were honor roll kids. Holy shit! Was this was this over a guy? Is this, this kind of that's the back. thing? Yeah. You think we all thought it was over a boy, oh. but it's much deeper than that. It was this deep seated jealousy, and and it just it was there was more of a build up than we all kind of thought, huh. and that's what this episode of Mean Girl Murders kind of explores. Any idea when it's uh, going to air? I didn't even know it was airing until my friend ca- called me and told me that she saw me on television so i couldn't really tell you exactly it's probably in the next few weeks i would imagine so it, it's coming up yes okay so you got to let us know so we can help promote that i was kept out of the national honor society because i let a guy copy one of my papers i imagine for stabbing a classmate you're, you're expelled you just that's i would first think round knockout this, the worst thing that is such a passive aggressive way to say i was papers. kept out <laughs> of the honor society. i know listen to him i believe i believe you're not bitter I about you're not bitter at all you're not blaming other people no he, he doesn't think, nothing that, he doesn't the, think the world owes him anything does he? yeah not no. at all he works for what he gets i don't know why i keep coming back yeah it's, it wasn't for Eric, I'd have left a long time ago. What a it's, humble it's brag. <laughs> I didn't say I was in the National I know, but you right. could have been. You, no, 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 no. He said he should have been. There's Whose a fault is it? Whose the, fault is the it? The only thing that would have made it worse is I turned them down. Who's, <laughs> yes. he, who's keeping you down, man? Who's really keeping you down? I'll, I'll tell you all about it later. It's, okay. it's, it's very, very bad. So, <laughs> Wow, he's speechless. That I know, it's great. It doesn't happen very often, Erica. So what happened to this woman? She's doing 27 years? Yeah, she was only 17. But you know what's sad? I remember she was laughing while she was stabbing. Oh, jeez. This girl. And then at the sentencing, she she just, 
it was uh, it was bad. no remorse. How, yeah, yes, that's no. what I was going to ask. No. What? A, a, a sociopath. See, I felt bad when I was kept it's out of the national. It's hard to think that about a seventeen-year-old, right? Is, because he is. called me for plagiarism. <laughs> Shark eyes. <sighs> It's hard to think that about a 17-year-old. Dead eyes, like a doll's eyes. She didn't have that, but... Robert Shaw. Like but, a doll's 1972. Eyes. <laughs> Jaws. I, I recommend it. If people Jaws? can remember this... Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. One of the best opening scenes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So she My had... brother still won't swim in open water because of that movie. Oh, my God. No did way. You, did you tell him he it's a movie? It when, he saw it when tell I him was I said six he's a and baby. he was five, and yeah. he's like, no, I won't do it. Well, actually, he will. Didn't he you will see now. the look on Roy Scheider's face when he sees it? When he, he backs up, up in the boat, didn't well, he? I don't know if he did or not, but that that look, right? Oh, we're back to Why dead bodies. Thanks, sir, giving us full circle. Okay, what were we talking about? <laughs> right, what were we the, talking about? The Pet assailant, the creepers, convicted honor society member. I don't know how soul she got of in seventeen-year-olds. What were we talking about? Who is there at sentencing, and she's no remorse? No, it didn't seem like it. Were you there in the courtroom? Mm -hmm. What did you think when you when she went up? Did you think she's going to squirt a few and beg for mercy and explain how she had a horrible life and this was she deserved a second chance and blah 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 blah? I guess you kind of always hope that, but that doesn't usually happen. You remember the Uber driver who shot a bunch of people? Mm -hmm. Remember Wayne that guy? Yep, 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 yep. That was probably one of the craziest. So that one, right when you said that, for some reason that kind of popped into my mind. I think that was one of the most wild sentencings. He was also not Nassar remorseful, sentencing. or did he did he throw himself? Oh, no, he of the was. Court? Oh was no, no, no. he was. Like they got what they had coming. Oh, he was saying he was hearing voices and and that he was told to. Oh, like cool. When does he get Sam out? Type. When does he get out of prison? <laughs> But that's different because than just... Because you know he's going to get out eventually, don't, don't that's they? That's different than having, like, no... Yeah, he had to be physically restrained. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. I've, seen, yeah I've seen that before. Wow. Yeah. I saw... Uh, in the, the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had that kind of energy. What's going on? Aww. I'm not sure Sean appears in mirrors. Oh, I was at a federal courthouse in Grand Rapids in the early 2000s, back before I was in sports, and it was the first uh, case in Michigan where somebody was going to get the death penalty because it was in federal courthouse. Oh, wow. And the guy stood up and started, the defendant, and started wailing on his own lawyer. And it was it was shocking, actually. It just came out of nowhere. Just bam, 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 bam. And then the, the bailiffs and the security all had to come in and restrain him and take him out of the courthouse as he's kicking and screaming and yelling. Damn. It was, it was something. On his own lawyer. On his own lawyer. Well, he did get convicted, right? So it's not like he owed this guy anything. Yeah, lawyer's over here good. You know, if you can't get them off, you may as well. But, well, you know, you said, you but see. no, courthouses, you know this, but Mike, I think, knows this, right? They're orderly places, generally. Generally. There's a lot of structure, and so to have the physical violence just burst out of nowhere. It's jarring. It is. It's extra jarring it when is. you're, because it's always so, si it's very quiet. It is. And orderly, sure. yes. Yeah. Not a, yeah. So sure. when it comes out of nowhere like that. Yeah, people aren't worried about feet and bodies and all that kind of thing in <laughs> oh, somehow ties sean is committed to tying every thread <laughs> together in this this hair shirt of depravity it's uh it's a wonderful <laughs> wonderful bit of craftsmanship um I, the, when you talk about stabbings and people who are <laughs> seem remorseless yeah what were you going to call this show? i like that I, have, I, like I have seen remorse though oh okay so i'm sure as i'm sure you all have not with well, Mike, I've seen not with people Mike, right. cry, and I've seen people uh, become emotional, and I've seen it affect the judge. And every time I've seen it, I always feel like they're really crying for themselves. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how these judges continue to be sucked in by this, where it's obvious that they are sorry that they were caught. Most of the they're time, not it's sorry yes, for what they it's did. Sorry that they were caught, and it, and they're sorry that. Oh my gosh, this is where I'm at and I'm going to this is my reality now. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, and and it's funny it's only that those few times where you can see that they they really do have that empathy and compassion and Yeah, do I would, you think, I would think a drunk driver remorse. or somebody somebody who uh, you know lost control of the car, not talking about Larry Delisle by the way, but uh, some God. other person 
Or where, accidentally shooting someone. Right, yeah. I, I saw an intruder. I fired. It was dark. It turns out it was my boyfriend, my kid, my whatever dog coming through the back window. That I can buy. But when it's like, God, when I took all that money from a contractor and I went and I bought a nice car and went yeah, on when some I, vacations, when I, I feel so bad. It's like you when feel When I plotted like, my boyfriend's murder over six months. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and then I tied up his girlfriend and, and then I shot him and then I, you know... Yeah. Stole his I was, money. I, I was pouring so bad. a nail polish remover into her eyes and saying, how Jeez. do you like that, bitch? And I just realized... <laughs> Sorry, did we get into a really dark wow. place? <laughs> Sorry. Nail polish remover? How many times have you done that? It's not like I did it. How many times have you done that? Well, it's not like I've actually... It's like I can feel the burning specific. now. Yeah. Not for real, but I mean, when you're thinking of you know solvents that are handy, that one's really you're right there. Of, no, what you really mean is when you're is thinking of revenge. Is it really that handy? It's a dark episode. Well, Why you, are you blinding him anyway? Why are you working out your theories in here? When you yeah, keep, he's testing them out. When you keep a gallon of it under the sink, it's handy. I mean, it's and you who know, doesn't have a bag of lime in their basement, yeah, you right? Know when you I sprinkle mean, a little rat poison on your spouse's it's just me and Joe Pesci? I mean, come on. what you do to your enemies. When you're sought hang up the placenta and you had a little you keep right that right in right. mind oh. sir yeah well your your last meal sean will be some placenta and then i'll take you in the basement for a little nail oh, polish do you, do you add mushrooms to the saute and just keep it traditional Jesus or do you Christ. go like bok choy or something and make it a little i've never heard Asian of anyone place. smoking it though i don't know i've never heard smoking either you i don't know what kind of websites you're on at night hey oh. everyone has a fetish don't kink shame him no this is back in the 90s Orca what? is and never coming crazy back. Crazy times back in the 90s. No, that's we're right all when smoking my kids were born. And, no, I was, I was surrounded by a lot of hippies in Ann Arbor, and that was the thing. They froze I was in Ann Arbor in the 90s, and I've never heard that. What are you talking about? But look at your crowd, right? It's a little bit different. What does that mean? You weren't hanging out with hippies. Don't stereotype me. <laughs> you weren't hanging out. Were you hanging out with hippies? Me? Do, yeah. I, do I look like I was? Of course not. So that's the thing. This is the, the placenta. I don't the, like to categorize the people. Eat the Sean. placenta crowd is the uh, is the hippie crowd. The eat the placenta crowd. <laughs> what about the smoke the placenta? That, that explains crowd. the I've bad breath. I've never actually heard about smoking the placenta. It's just said it. no. Erica said talking about smoking <laughs> the placenta. You were doing the motion. Oh, though, yeah. and no, 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 no. Not smoking that. That was just getting high. No, that's the <laughs> thing. You get high. You light a candle. You eat your placenta. And, oh. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I didn't get the pattern down. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm feeling a lot better about the what? nail polish now. Yeah. I don't feel like the weirdest I'm just guy. Talking about room. some existential ritual or whatever, I'm I, and giving it back to the earth. Not that that's my thing. You're talking about <laughs> harming people. What the fuck? You know I'm what not... was also creepy with the Dan Schneider thing with with Nickelodeon is he had this. Foot fetish. He exchanged letters with John Wayne Gacy. Uh, that was oh. Brian Peck did. Yeah, oh, Brian Peck yeah. did. My bad. Uh. Yeah, Brian Peck also gifted a I'm fourteen sure year old on the set a um, picture, a painting drawn by John Wayne Gacy. But you know what? Gacy wrote what everybody. Gacy was like a massive pen pal of a lot of people <laughs> in the eighties. It's the weirdest thing. He did have a lot of time on his hands. Is that where you got your tip for the nail polish? Nail he, polish remover. If we're going to do this, let's so do you're, it. Right. You're, you, you, you got a letter from pal with John Wayne Gacy. No, oh, that's interesting. No, Everybody in the eighties no. was. Although when I was in when I was in middle school, maybe it was high school, I did have a pen pal who was in on death row, I think, in Arizona, and he seemed like a very nice guy. What? But I, it was some somebody. There was some ad in the South End, and my mom, who worked at Wayne State, saw it and it said prisoners seeking pen pals, and she's like, "Want you?" And I said, "Okay." And we had a very very nice uh, little correspondence going for a while, but I could never get up the nerve to ask him, why are you in prison? I always really wanted to do that. And I never could. It just felt like the whole correspondence was building up to, why are you in there? He seemed like a nice guy. <laughs> well, from, you know, when you're separated by two time zones in 17 states, you know. What did I don't, you guys talk about then? I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think about that. It was just like, hey, how's, you know, when you're in How to blind grade people. or something, say, like, hey, how's it going? Do, you know, the letters they give you don't... all these tips? Yeah, have you ever used nail polish remover to blind? That may be where I got the nail polish remover idea. And he did say something about, you know, pro yeah. tip. It's always handy to have some lime around if you need it. And I remember saying, why? And he said something that dissolves flesh. And so bone. how do you hold your victim's eyes open to get the remover in? Well, I'm not saying I would do this, but I did see a movie with Michael Caine where they oh, use toothpicks. Oh, okay. It's called The Island. Mm. 
one of many Michael Caine movies when he was making like one a week before he was, you know, Sir Michael Caine. I figured you had the Clockwork Orange contraption. Oh, no, oh, I've never oh. seen that movie. What? No. Really? No. I, you know, anytime I, I see guys wearing jock straps on the outside of their pants, I'm going in the other direction. That's just, that's not good. Oh, that is a it's, fantastic movie. I'm surprised you haven't seen that. Well, I was probably working on my nails. But you love old Removing movies. the polish as well as... Do you not like Stanley Kubrick films? Is that a... Uh, oh, Full Metal Jacket. Oh, man, I could watch Sergeant Hartman all day. Well, it sounds and, like uh, you. And then, uh, and the then Dr. Strangelove. That's why it's amazing sure. we've been two here for 250 episodes. What's that? <laughs> You know what? You know what? Stanley Kubrick and Sean have in common. You have to go through a lot of takes to get one that you're going to use. Exactly. He's got. He's got talent. That's the difference. No, you're a very talented gentleman. Oh, he's got talent. Everybody has a talent, just like every, a there's obsessed. somebody for everybody. He's Sean a has a talent. Just, with what lighting. is a weird talent you have, Sean? Mm, a weird talent. Yeah. I have no talent of any you can kind. Can prepare a placenta like nobody else. You know what? A, in, in, an interesting one. Someone told me. They said you are oddly good at parallel parking. No, oh, really? I'm actually not a parallel parking. Why do they say oddly? Woman. Why do they not think you're good at parallel parking? Because they're misogynists. I think people yeah. Say, yeah, I think people think w female drivers are terrible at... Yeah, I, I, I think it's driving. odd that anybody's good at parallel parking. That's so easy. You're you know moving what the key backwards. is to parallel parking? Uh, other than just having a decent spatial sense of knowing if you can get in there or not. Yeah. It's just lining I whip up... whip in there like... Lining up your back, yeah. the driver's side back tail light or corner or whatever... With the opposite side front corner of the car that you're backing into. And once those lines hit, you turn and you're good every single time. How long have you known this? Since, <laughs> I don't know. My driver's instructor taught me when I was 14. So we had to wait 250 episodes for you to kick some legitimate wisdom. You've been depriving us it of is this. By far, as long as you have the space, you know you can get your car. And some people, how many times you behind somebody, they, they, they misjudged the, the width, not the width, or the length of the yeah, opening. Like all the time. every time? Yeah. All the time. So that, Unless obviously, it's Erica. you have to start there. you got to have a spatial sense for that. But once you start going in, if there's room, if you line it up, you're, you're good. It can be difficult That's to... Really other talent, talents. You guys That's have, not really a talent. Though. I think it's a talent. It can be difficult to, to judge that when you have nail polish remover burning your eyeballs. I have a good sense of direction. <laughs> How about that? That's a weird talent. Uh, huh. I always know where I am. <laughs> oh. Yes. You, you're... But yeah. existentially, I have no your own idea head. where I am. Yeah, exactly. So it's so it's sort of it's a trade off. <laughs> oh my God! That's uh, well, we've we've learned a lot here today, kids. Um, <laughs> oh, I can go into a new city and and immediately know which way's which and all that. Ah, that's that's that, that's, that's, that's my hidden talent. I can I can look at a map for about five minutes and take you around any city. Yeah, I can do yeah. the same. Yeah. So. Oh, God. I, I have the worst sense of direction ever. Like I was going to, I was going to say maybe that's a guy thing, but no. It's, I was yeah. going to pick up my niece uh, last late last night from a, a party. She's she, kind of like my daughter. She calls me Uncle Dad. Anyway, I said, okay, what side of the street are you on? The left side. Uh, what? Which way am I coming? I hate that. It's my what? Pet I said, Livy, north or south? Mm -hmm. And she, had, she couldn't tell me. She's probably high on placenta. <laughs> or something else. <laughs> you forgot the, the road. Oh, she was... No, I don't know. She, who knows? I don't know. I don't. What are the young people doing these days? Ketamine. <laughs> yeah. Well, bath salts. Those are old. I think they're still doing the TikTok until it's banned. Nice segue. What are the kids doing today? Ketamine. <laughs> not that my, not that my gal, uh, my niece is, but yeah. Wow. Well, it's. Uh, well, you can't rule it out, but. Um, but yeah, so so Erica, what do you? So you're doing Left some more side. TV. You're doing a little reality TV. Did did they just call you up, or are you are you out there available for gigs? Uh, I do some. I've worked with them in the past. Some of the producers with like Oxygen and Investigation Discovery. So if there's stories that I've covered heavily, I'll help them out and uh, chat about it. Like um, on like camera a, or just a field uh, producer, or I mean, or are they now saying, "Hey, we got a story. We need some talent for this story. Let's call Erica and see if." Because I remember Andrea Isom when she left to do some reality TV. I think they were just dialing her into stories, right? It's like, okay, you tell this story. I mean, is there is there a chance we're going to see you fronting more of these stories that you don't have a history with? Uh, if that I don't have a history with, I mean, yeah, they said if I mean, if they choose me, that's sure. I'm okay. I'm down, but uh, I'm still doing my public relations thing. If anyone needs any 
media coaching or oh boy. there's a few print people out I think there. We all do. We got three hands up here. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of print people turning over to broadcast, I've noticed. So yeah, uh, if anyone needs any help, let me so, know. So so what are some other of your how would you describe it? Weird talents or ex- quirky Weird talents. T- quirky quirky talents. Hmm. Uh under the radar. I'm talents. very, very klutzy. Very klutzy. I will, I'll just be standing there and fall over randomly. <laughs> but can you? But you get up quickly. But I, I'll get. But I'm a, I'm a good dancer and I can figure skate. Oh, I, I, can, I can be it. graceful. Oh, oh that's a I nice I can be combo. very graceful, but that's I'm the nice biggest com- klutz. That's a okay. nice combo. It's strange. No, it makes you interesting. It's, well, I it's have like noticed contradictory combos. Skating does help if you're clumsy because you're constantly adjusting your balance. So you may stumble, but not end up face planting because you. You know, you have that yeah. that sort of inner balance. What kind there. of skating? She said figure, figure skating. skating. Oh, oh, I didn't hear the figure. I speed, yeah, yeah. sorry. Speed skating, Sean. Sure. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, long yeah. Track. skating's cool. Long track. No, did you do skating. that? As would you do that when you were little? Did your your folks, yes? Folks I started in that? figure skating when I was like four, and I kept with it for I don't know, like ten years. And oh, so you can really skate? I think yeah. I was doing like double axles and oh. Did you use the? Uh, oh. So I've I've gone to a couple That's of rinks a where they have the figure skating apparatus, you know, tied up in the rafters. Mm-hmm. Like it looks like you're going to be oh, yeah. Peter Pan or yes. something. And- that was my favorite. And it's funny because I, when I was practicing my double axles, I was in that thing, and <laughs> I would just jump, and then my coach would be pulling the like a bungee, right? Yeah. yeah, and I would just be flying sometimes. He'd be like, "What are you doing?" Just having fun. Having oh, blast, just having a blast, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't, like, do a fly by the tower. You'd buzz him with the blades and, like, clip off a lock of his hair. Or you didn't get that And drop uh, polish in his eyes. That's you just want to talk like, about dead bodies Jesus. some it's more. The polish. By, Mark, it's, there's symmetry. What, is what about you, Mark? Powerful. Me? Yeah. I have no talent whatsoever. No, you but, have talent. Yeah, there's there's something. Talents. There's something there. I mean, aside from your calves. <laughs> he can take apart a dryer and put it back together. <laughs> I'm really good at taking things. I apart. don't know if it works when you put it back together, but he can put uh, it back together rarely. without any spare parts. Right? Yeah. Sure. Well, what? So what? What? I don't. Have, I don't really have any talent. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. <laughs> no. You can shave a beautiful a line in the beard right on the chin there. I have no talent. It's fine. I'm happy with it. It's stylish. I don't know. I've never really thought about it. Really? Yeah. I haven't. I don't have any talents. I don't know. Boy, this really took a turn. What's yours? Yeah, We're all staring at him. I right know. Now. I feel oh, this is really awkward. I had no idea. I we told spending you so I much can. time with a loser. I'm really good with space. <laughs> <laughs> 250 episodes. Jeez. Okay, what are you obsessed That's with? That's some news we could have used a little early on, too. Oh, wow. Oh, boy, man. Besides politics. Um, not obsessed with politics. I'm over politics. I realized, I realized a long time ago that politics mean a lot more to everybody else than it really does to me. But I like arguing. Um... No, you don't. What am I? Yeah, I do. Edgy comedy. No, oh, what am I obsessed with? Oh boy, I don't know. I, I do I, breakfast burritos. I get very. <laughs> <laughs> I've moved on from burritos. They're into a bowls good breakfast now. burrito. I mean, it's, it's, I, I get it. No, I get it. Sure. I get that obsession. Yeah, Especially if there's a talk little... about your guilty pleasures. That's what got us knocked off there in the first place. <laughs> Oh, um, I don't know. You know me. I like Mike it. likes uh, Triumph. By the way, that's his guilty pleasure. Yeah, I mean, I like all. But I'm not guilty about him. I'm proud. Pop culture. I'm really into pop culture. I guess. I guess that's my thing. Pop, poppy news. I like. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm a. I love absorbing news. Mm-hmm. You like oligarchs and their soccer teams. I wish uh, Chelsea had their oligarch back. It sucks. Anyway, well, if, if you're lucky, on. maybe Putin will buy them with some uh, some funds that are frozen once he finally gets his ass out of Ukraine. Well, we're not going to ask Mike because he has too many talents. I know we'll be here all day. We need I feel like we already are. Need another show for that. I know one talent. He is not being on the honor roll. I'm oh. still, still chastened by that. In fact, I've been kind of in a yeah, funk yeah, since, yeah. since... Well, he uh, should have been on the honor Since roll, Erica right? triggered me. But. That's what I'm so here for. It wouldn't be an episode of ML Solo Detroit. I know some people heard the bell earlier if we didn't mention Kwame Kilpatrick. But this stabbing story, when you told me about it... it Speaking rem- of what are you obsessed with? <laughs> yeah, right. we have a special I'm a, bell. I'm obsessed right. with justice. But when, and we still oh, haven't had it around yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, of course you are. But yeah, yeah, when yeah. Uh, Schaefer and I were working on a lot of the Kilpatrick stories, I'm somehow just, we became aware <laughs> of, uh, somebody wanted us to follow up, I think it was, on the, um, this was a famous stabbing during the fireworks at Hart Plaza back in the early 80s 
where there were a couple of uh, black girls who got in a fight with a, a woman, a white woman from Macomb County. And this became a big racial thing where it's like, oh, you know, they're really coming down. Suburbanites come down for the fireworks. They don't feel safe. So we have all these police here. And then we have this fight. And then it reinforced everybody's feeling that if you come to Detroit and you're a suburbanite, you're not safe because these women attacked. And there were racial overtones. There's all this other stuff. It was a very, very famous situation. And, uh, and so we got a tip that you, the, uh, I think the woman who had done the stabbing was just coming up for parole. And so Schaefer looked into it, and it turned out that she was not coming up for parole because since she'd gone into prison, she had committed multiple crimes in prison. And so this woman that everybody was saying, oh, it's just misunderstood. And this, no, this was a genuinely bad bitch who was nasty when she was out free, and when she got into prison, she basically became boss girl she a bad in the bitch. prison. Yeah, she was a tough customer. And that all just came up during the Kilpatrick thing, and we didn't really pursue it because we had more Kilpatrick stuff to do. So there's your, there's your de rigueur Kilpatrick reference in an episode of ML Solar Detroit because we pretty much always have to have one. Although there is a little bit of a news update. Because it has been reported that the feds are trying to get after Kilpatrick's assets after finding out about his big-ass house in Novi and about his $90,000 foreign SUV that he's enjoying. So Why is, why is that so hard to go after that and get it back? I mean, we all see the house. We all see the car. I know. Why is it so hard? Um, you know, I don't know what the property rules are in Michigan, but they're, if, if assets are rules, in your spouse's sh- name, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I've always said. Yeah, they can rules, be rules. protected. So, and oh, wait, really? Yeah. So, um, so I did a story in New Hampshire if we're going into deep cuts here about the state Republican party chairman who was broke. He had borrowed some money, had done some projects and, And people were after him for money, but he still lived in a beautiful house, drove a very nice car. His family made sizable contributions to charities because he was a very charitable guy. He actually was a guy I really liked a lot. He was really interesting. He was smart. He was funny. He was entrepreneurial. He was a very good guy, but he just had some bad luck because the economy turned down and he got a little more creative with the financing than he should have. But he had all of these great things still. He still enjoyed a certain level of of uh, good living because everything was in his wife's name. Mm. So when there was a judgment against them, they'd be like, you know what, Steve, you owe us this. And he'd be like, that's my wife's. And so they couldn't. Now that was New Hampshire. That's right. Cause he, the LLC, isn't there an LLC involved? Well, th- no, in that case there, there might've been, but I think just as a no, family, well, so yeah. In, so, well, in Florida, you know, if you lose a big judgment, sure. And they take all your assets. They can't take your house. Yeah, that's why OJ moved there. And and some other folks. Mm-hmm. But um, but so there's that. In Michigan, I don't think that's the same thing. But I think when they're trying to separate who the, the money came from and where. And I think one of the things they believe is, or maybe they've determined this, is that his, his mother, Carolyn Cheeks Kilpatrick, has co-signed for some of these things. Oh, oh really? I don't, I don't think that really makes a difference. But, um, but yeah, I, I think they're trying to go after it. And I, and I keep checking in with Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy on when is she going to try and get the restitution from Kilpatrick and Christine Beatty? And they're I've, still thinking about it. I've just come to accept that any um, like fiscal charge in a criminal case just never has to be paid. It just seems like it never has to be paid. You just have to do your time. Well, you know, the issue here is in Wayne County where we have more murders than we have prosecutors do you want to spend a bunch of time and a bunch of resources trying to get money from some you got from some guy you know that's probably hit it pretty and they well? know it and then they just yeah. i mean it's just you, you don't and it's a wash you don't want to let people get away with things because they're dicks but at the same time it's like it's exhausting to try and get people who absolutely will not follow the law to follow the law that's no reason to let him get away with it. But at the same time, how many people who are actually dangerous to people? Like, I don't think Kwame Kilpatrick has ever been a danger to another human being. I, I've said many times the Manugan Mansion party didn't happen. He didn't kill Strawberry. Charlie's looked into this more than any other reporter and has come to the same conclusion. Charlie LaDuff. And so that's, you know, he's not a danger to anybody else, but 
he is a danger to take your money. He's a menace. To sleep he's with your woman. Menace. To, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's, uh, a usurper. <laughs> that's not a bad term. That's very good. Sean, that's an out. That's great, great contribution. That's I love it. Yeah. Term. Yeah. Now, and speaking of now, contributions, Sean, do you have to go? Here we go. Wait, I, I, I want to see where he's going here. Speaking of contributions, I unfortunately. You're going to use that great sense of direction any minute now. I have to leave. I got to get to a press conference. Taking the dusty road to Ann Arbor. It is a little He's dusty. making that up. A lot He's of just construction. What's his name? Dusty Beans or who's the dusty new? May. Dusty you'll, May. You'll dusty learn it soon enough. Dusty Don't worry. May. Yeah, Dusty, dusty May. May. Dusty what time's May. the presser? Forty-five minutes from now. Pretty much. You better hurry. So I, I and I have to. Ch- I got to change the clothes in the car. So I got to. What? Why? I'll do that while I'm You're driving. You're not going to represent. Speaking of weird for talents, them and not for us. Speaking of talent, I'm wearing this. I'm yeah, he's wearing putting the, on a uh, suit. I'm wearing the. What do you call this? What is this? A hoodie? It's a sweatshirt. Yeah. It's got the label of the show on. Yeah. Some label people call it a hoodie. <laughs> it's a new term the kids came up with when they're on ketamine. That's another weird talent you can change in the car while you're driving, right? Uh, I don't think you want to say that in a recorded session that um, you're doing that. So when you turn yeah, upside down on the, top the of only, school the school bus, thing half, is, half is, nude. No, no, no. The only thing is <laughs> yeah. when you're trying to tie your shoes. What? While you're driving. What are you talk? Get out of here. I'm Go. Kidding, you I'm got kidding. 45 minutes to be there. All right. Thanks for coming. Yes. Good to see you. A- ask Good what is real. Don't wait three months, right? No. Like I said, I'm just going to start I mean, showing up. Yeah, that'd be great. Stick to the parallel parking sport. Yes, sir. All right. See you, boys. We asked Dusty May if he's going to wear a suit. <laughs> Come on, this should just you should just run with it. Just just dig into I it. Heard just, I heard that. I heard that the whole time I was in I heard that the whole time I was in Charlotte yes, did. from people on their staff and whatever, you know. She, uh, Izzo brought it up at a press conference <laughs> between the games. I love it. It's so great. Between the games he said something about it too. I think that should be your hook. You should ask everybody if they if you're a coach if they're gonna wear a suit. And I was of course sitting there in my hoodie, not this one, but you know, with a college shirt at least so that's at least something yeah anyway. when you were on national tv you had a college shirt on that was very classy of you was it yeah okay i'll take your word for it that's another weird talent of you for you of yours get out of here you know what i mean go right. yeah go t- <laughs> what are you doing i'm going i right, some place to be i do see ya uh, and if you have to go somewhere, uh, why don't you give our friends at Zot Ford a call, right? They can get you. i see you later. Bye. Again, you have the longest goodbyes. Just get out of here. Oh, he doesn't want to leave. Separation really anxiety. doesn't. You're right, Eric. Yeah. He, he loves want. us. He's got a tear in his eye, and it's not from the nail polish remover. <laughs> our friends at Zot Ford, they're still yeah, offering free pickup and delivery and recalls, warranty work, and all other kinds of repairs. So don't hesitate to reach out and allow them to take care of all your automotive needs. Plus, that continues to celebrate Ford Truck Month with monster selection of Ford trucks, including uh, the aforementioned F 150s, 250s, and 355s. 355s. 350s. 350. Not, not to mention tons of Ford Explorers and Expeditions ready for immediate deliveries. Out Ford has killer deals during Ford Truck Month, like leases around $200 a month on new 23 Ford F 150s and lease payments around $300 a month on new 24 Ford Explorers. So give them a call, 248-660-9133. Take advantage of all their massive deals. Get all the details and surf their massive inventory at dealsinthed.com. And when you go there, tell them ML. In fact, you see, if you see Steve Gabar out and about, this man is a regular boulevardier. He's everywhere. You tell him ML said, hey. A regular. Seriously, do it. A regular what? Boulevardier. I wanted to wait till Sean left to say that. Fancy. That's, that's French. Why are you you're always showing off? Big time. In fact, I had a column this week where I got to make a reference to the French Dumb and Dumber movie poster. I saw the headline. Describing the, uh, how when I was standing on a subway platform in France in 1995, there was a poster for Dumb and Dumber, which had just come out in French. In France. And in French. And the poster said it had the two idiots there, and it said, Lequel est le plus intelligent? Which means, which one is the smartest or the most smart? or most intelligent. And underneath it says, aucune, which in French means neither, which I thought was, that's the French translation of dumb and dumber because they would never use three words when they could use 12. So it was, (laughs) which one is the most intelligent? Neither. That means dumb and dumber. And so I wrote a column about the latest mess in East Lansing and said, you know, when I look at the MSU Board of Trustees, it reminds me of that movie poster. Which one of these people is the most intelligent? And I have to look <laughs> at it and I have to say, none no. of them. It's a shame. It's terrible. We'll have a link to that column on our website. Well, it, we may also have a picture of Sean wearing a collared shirt. We'll have to think about whether we want to, uh, you know, if we put that up there, 
all these women who have fetishes about bald guys with collared shirts are going to start sending Sean emails. And, Don't kink shame him. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of. He's, uh, he's quite a slab of placenta. Oh, um, a slab? That's, I, oh, I just, gross. I don't know why that sounded. A section, I don't know. Really? <laughs> gross, yeah, yeah juicy. But oh. If, if you, <laughs> if you want to see Sean in all his glory, maybe you need to have your eyes fixed. And if you need some eye surgery done or some sort of procedure to give you better than perfect vision, as those of us, like Mark and I, who have had LASIK done, we have 2015 vision, which is better than 2020, which means at a distance... Here's your Seinfeld reference. We can spot a Mercury dime. But sometimes as we get older, we just can't tell whether that horse is a horse or our cousin Jeffrey talking to a beautiful woman. <laughs> okay, that's really a deep right, Seinfeld now I got, reference. I got the reference. Now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. After Ling got bit by the dog. If Maz was here, he'd, he'd know. But, um, but very few people make it through life without ever needing corrected vision. Most adults are either nearsighted, farsighted, have astigmatism, or get cataracts. That's just a fact of life, folks. But your problem, whatever it is, can be solved in 10 minutes and never be dealt with again if you'll take a minute to sign up for a free evaluation at Yaldo Eye Center. Dr. Yaldo has seen it all and solved the vision problems for some 50,000 Michiganders with custom LASIK or lens replacement for those of us who are over 40 who have developed a problem seeing small stuff like your phone, in fact, when I'm looking at small stuff, I have my phone handy because I use the flashlight because if I have some light, I can actually read a menu, but without it... I don't, did we both think the same thing? Yeah. Pretty, <laughs> yes. pretty yeah. pathetic. <laughs> you know, so I'm sitting at a restaurant and there's a table of beautiful women next to me. I'm like, maybe I'll send those women a drink. And they'll say, that handsome man just sent us a drink. And then I pull out my phone to light up my menu. I'm like, no, they're thinking that old creep just sent us... Some drinks, and then they that's when the pepper spray comes up. But, anyways, you don't need to go into that. You can avoid that. These are fast, painless, and safe procedures, as safe as any in all of medicine. So, do what all of, do what many of the listeners on this podcast and the Drew and Mike show have done get an evaluation, have Dr. Yaller define and then solve your issue, and then throw your glasses, contacts, and readers in the trash once and for all. Be done with it. You can find out more at 1 800 398 Eyes. Or go to the YaldoEyeCenter.com. And if vision is a problem, like vision about what am I going to do when I retire? What should I do with my money? Should I watch the stock market every day? No, no, no good friends. No. You should not. You should turn to our friends Luke Nowacki yeah. and Zach at Not only uh, Strategies. should you take care of your physical health, you got to take care of your investment health, which is why we work with the doctor of personal finance. That's Luke Nowacki because he can prescribe an investment strategy tailored specifically for you, from annuities to retirement accounts to college savings, call Luke at Pinnacle Wealth Strategies and schedule a personalized exam of your financial health. Nowacki might not know beans about kidneys, but he knows his way around the financial markets. That's Luke Nowacki, 248-663-4748. Because when you call Luke, he'll make it all about you, sweetheart. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Bonaic Wealth. Sync member FINRA SIPC Bonaic Wealth. Sync is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names. Products or services referenced here are independent Bonaic Wealth. Sync. And we'll have a link to all of these sponsors' website at our website, which is mlsoulofdetroit.com. And when you do business with them, please let them know that we sent you because that's why they're going to come back as a sponsor and that's why we're going to keep coming back because we got enough hobbies that don't pay. We'd like this to be. A little, you know, a little beer money here or there, right? There you go. Oh, man, the geeks have inherited the earth. Did I do that? What a dork. Does him wanting to play with us again mean that he's turning into a geek? Or we're turning into cool guys? So, it's political season, and this week's geek is an Ohio candidate for Congress who was competing and sent out his concession speech. He says, tonight did not go as we had hoped but as we know, this race is decided in the primary. In other words, if you didn't win the nomination, there's no way you're going to win the general. Or if you're in the right party, you won the nomination, you will win the general. So this is a candidate for Congress basically saying, I'm not going to win my primary, so this is over. And so I want to give my congratulations to my opponent. A very gracious concession speech. The only problem is it came out at 3.19 p.m. and the polls didn't close for another Four hours later. So 10 minutes later, this jabroni sends out a statement saying, hey, two emails were prepared for this evening. 
one declaring a victory and one conceding the race. The concession email was sent in error as it was being loaded into the media distribution oh. portal as a draft <laughs> in the event of a loss. Accidentally, the send now button we clicked instead of draft. The winning email was also drafted, but was not sent in error, thankfully. Anyone who works in communications knows it's not uncommon to have speeches and releases prepared <laughs> in the event of each outcome, especially on such an important night. It's simply good strategy. This candidate... Mr. Myers concluded, whatever the results return this evening, I'll be thankful for this journey. And yes, the media will be getting a release sometime after the results roll in, declaring a victory or concession. Thank you. In the meantime, he was hoping that people would go out and still vote for him because he wasn't quitting yet. But in the end, Derek Myers turned out to be somewhat prophetic in this Ohio Republican congressional primary because he did not win. In fact, he did very poorly indeed, whether it's because he was a bad candidate, because he was a nitwit, or because he released his concession speech early. We don't know. But Mr. Myers, you did not win your primary, but you did win here. You are our Geek of the Week. Congrats. Well done, sir. Now, I don't know if anybody caught my column this week, but I did re work a, a New Wave reference into the little blurb that appeared before it for Power, Ooh. Corruption, and Lies by New Order. Did you ever figure skate to any New Wave music? No. No. There's no way she did. <laughs> what, what, I'm what, what kind that of for music you. Did, you, did you always choose? I didn't. Well, it had to be either classical or usually music people know pretty well like pop music okay so you yeah. something current or something elegant i did dance to elvis that was fun okay Wh which which elvis all shook up oh really Ooh. had a cool outfit too you still have it on uh tape somewhere i do i have well, next time bring it in oh no <laughs> there's there's a couple there's a couple videos that get pulled out randomly one when i was on trl what do you? I know what? that's not coming out. I want to know the story this story though. Total Why? request I, live. Is this yeah. MTV? Oh I'm my so god! Glad you know that because I'll bring that up sometimes, and people are like, "What's TRL?" Oh, awesome! I want to hear this whole sad. story. Yeah, how did you, you get on some MTV? Of just old videos of me, just home videos, and when I first was reporting, and and they're just. <laughs> we might okay. have, what, but you you don't have the frozen video where you froze on camera. That was not. No, you, you know I, I I don't. Which you talked about last time you're here. Great great story. I was looking for that too because I had an old drive and it's gone, unfortunately. So why were you Actually, on TRL? So I mean, who were you cheering for? Who did you want to see? I went to New York with my mom and my sister and a couple friends. I was 17 and and we went. I w I was you know. Total Request Live. Was, were you in the studio or were you out on the yeah, street? Yeah, we were the in the studio and, and they said, hey, do you want to talk about Eminem? And I was interviewed and they <laughs> invited us back. That's awesome. Justin Timberlake was going to be on the next day and my mom uh, said, no, you have school JT. tomorrow. What? We got to go home. And I, um, I'm like, come on. It's Justin Timberlake They're though. inviting us back. Because like we had child abuse. We had great energy. It is child abuse. Oh, no. we got to find that video. No, it was I'm going to watch every experience. TRL rerun just to find that video. <laughs> it was it was I was so geeked and I I just I thought I was the coolest person ever. <laughs> and did your friends cool. see you and yeah. did they talk about it at school and Yeah. Damn. They were so jealous, weren't they? Yeah, it's, they were. That's awesome. What a great story. It was so, really fun. But no 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 new wave uh uh you know, it, it does no, seem no, that wait. That certain activities lock you into certain genres of music, like for figure skating, you figure it's going to be pop or it's going to be classical. I've heard from people who go to strip clubs; it's always heavy metal music. And <laughs> what, for me, what, what strip clubs do they go to? There's one in in New Hampshire, but it's really more of a 
It's all. That's, they I got, mean, they got a placenta that, you're mumbling bar. over there. What's that? Sorry, oh, did you say I, a I placenta bar? It's, yeah, it's, it's you know you know how they usually have like the the steak for three dollars. Yeah. They had they had a placenta <laughs> no, bar. No, I feel like you're giving people ideas, and all of a sudden. A year from now, a placenta bar is going to pop up somewhere. Oh, I think it's a lot of those bad. women do make bad decisions. It could lead to uh, an abundance of placentas. But um, but I'm off track as usual. Uh, <laughs> Room Seven Six Zero Nine started on this show where we try and introduce you to new wave bands that you never heard of, or maybe some new wave tracks from bands that you love that you somehow overlooked. We have now broadened it to uh, you give us a great song that people might not know along with a great story and we will play it here on, on uh, room, in room 7609 so Joe K contacts us with a nomination for a group called the Washington Social Club I've never, never heard, of them. heard of the Washington Social Club Joe says I went to the Warp Tour in 2004 normally not my style of music but there were three bands I was actually interested in and a bunch of my friends were going huh. Huh. Conformist, all right. They all jumped on stage. Joe, would you jump on stage? So I figured, why not? It was horrible. <laughs> it was at the Silver Dome parking lot in August, which I imagine was pretty friggin' hot. Yeah. He says, indeed, it was hot as balls and no shade. <laughs> nice language of the lady in the room. I was only 18 at the time, so I didn't have a credit or debit card yet, and I ran out of money very early in the day. Plus, the three bands I wanted to see were literally spread out over the entire day, so we stayed together forever. That's when it gets interesting. you got to be resourceful. Well, it's, you Run know, out of money? Figure it out. Crawl under a car, you know, recycle some urine or... <laughs> what? We had piss drinkers early in the show. I don't know. Oh, that's... So, uh, you know, grab yourself a placenta sandwich. Anyways, the entire... The one bright spot was discovering this band, Washington Social Club. It was at a point in the day that my one buddy and I had no one we wanted to see. So we went to one of the random side stages where there was pretty much one, no one watching this band. They were more of an indie rock sounding band, not really the kind of band you'd find at Warped Tour. We were digging their sound. Then during one song, there was a longer guitar solo. While the guitar was doing his thing, the lead singer was dancing around on stage, then stopped and awkwardly wiggled his butt at the crowd. I looked at my buddy, and his reaction to the butt wiggling was, WTF? Question mark? This is quite a story. No, I, I probably should have read it in advance. It's getting ponderous, man. Ponderous. Since there were so few people there, and we were right next to the stage, the singer must have seen my buddy's reaction and responded into the mic, I don't know either, man! We laughed at that, and it also convinced me to buy their CD, Catching Looks, which I guess he did catch a look. Yeah, I listened to it did. a lot over the years. Warped to they had sucked. a moment, I think, I think so. on stage, and he never forgot it. The ass wiggling may have been a very effective marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. Warped Tour sucked, and I never went again. <laughs> but at least I discovered a cool <laughs> album. Great, great story. Really, any song from that album is good. But Charlie the Russian... And New Jersey malls were my favorite. So here, Joe K, for your listening pleasure, ass wiggling aside, is Charlie the Russian.
sure I say, hey man, I really need something So I go looking for Charlie But the ghost of the man is all that's there He looks at me with a dead, dead stare Says, hey man was in my head tonight. Hey, Charlie! So, yeah. Joe, um... <sighs> what? You don't like it? I'm not sure that would be in heavy rotation for me. I, I, I think there was a story in there somewhere. Of course not, because it's good. But it, it kind of <laughs> caught me off guard when he kind of, when they had the, what, they, what they call when you break it down and there's like no sound, you just kind of start talking and then they pick it up again. Yeah, like was, a cold ending? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was sort of like, oh. False end? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when he said Charlie, I kind of looked up, I thought yeah, maybe well, kinda... Leduff is coming down the stairs oh. or something. But he, he hijacked he, the song. He's, he's not in your yet. head. Not, he is. He's, he's, <laughs> he's looking at everyone's head. Is there? That's his. That's his. Uh, that's his gift. That's his burden. So uh, you really didn't like it. I like the song. I know. Well, it was it. all right. Yeah, it was okay. I could see watching that in a small bar slash bowling alley late at night oh after having a few <laughs> beers and a lot of smoke in there and kind of you know high on placenta. Yeah, tapping my foot and you know shaking my head. My uh, my blue jeans jacket. Um, Collar popped, but uh, but yeah. Other than that, no. I probably I'm gonna of course your collars pop. Yeah. I'm gonna look for something with a little more. And it, and because it's me, it would actually be a Gap blue jeans jacket, not a Levi's one, because they were a little cheaper. So. Oh. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? That's how I didn't get on Total Request You're Live. You're not very cool. You're not. Yeah, cool. No. No. So we did have an episode many, many moons ago about uh, Detroit's first black TV station, Channel 62 WGPR, before it became a CVS station. And my dream was to be on the scene, which was kind of Detroit's soul train. But the word was, first of all, I wasn't very confident, so I didn't think I could go. Second of all, I'm not a good dancer. Eric is a good dancer. I am not a good dancer. But the whole thing was the outfits were so fantastic and I think I think we got kind of an answer, maybe a little bit of a dodge that I had heard when I was a kid that if you went to be on on uh, on the scene, you had to wait on Jefferson for them to let you in, and if you were dressed all in white, they would not let you in because you just weren't colorful enough. Hmm. And of course, you know, with my complexion, I'm practically translucent anyway. Mm -hmm. So if I go there dressed in head to toe in white, I was never going to make it. Not that I had an all white outfit, but. I think I did have white jeans. That's, okay, let's not talk about that. But anyways, you that's, just weren't cool enough. Just it's okay. And you this still is, aren't. This you is a cool this is a uh, this is a consistent <laughs> plot line. That, in my life. I mean, yeah, that's you're barely cool enough for your own show. I, I'm sorry. It's not. That's I, that's why we invite. That's why we invite the superstars in, and and why I hang out with Mark, who has no talent. So I zero. You know, I feel a little better because uh, the bar is low. The bar. Is low. So that's room 7609. Please send your suggestions to us at mlsolvedetroit at gmail.com. As you can tell, we'll play just about anything, but it's got to come 
with a great story. Or just tell us what it meant to you, why this song somehow is one that, uh, that resonates with you. Um, we want to thank our donors. Um, sadly, that won't take long because we only have one new Patreon member. That is Stephen Smark, who has joined the Soul Patrol. Stephen, thank you so much for coming on board. We really appreciate it. Um, if you'd like to send us a one-time donation, it's still really easy to do that. It's so easy that Mark can tell you how in five seconds, maybe seven seconds. Uh, just go to the website, mlsoulofdetroit.com. All your options are up there, right? There's a PayPal button. PayPal. Venmo button. Venmo. There's even a link to the Patreon. You can just, just do that. And if you join us on Patreon for five bucks a month, that's the please, please let us get what we want level. You get this podcast before anybody else. Just do it already. That's it. Just do it. Listen to Erica. Please, so he stops begging people. Just do it. (laughs) And for five bucks a month, you can see her tell you to just do it. Do it. (laughs) Fifteen bucks a month, you'll get the bonus episode. In fact, we're about to record a bonus episode. This one will be Ask Erica, where she gives some sage advice to those of you looking around the world and saying, so many questions, so few answers. What should I do? Erica will tell you she will not steer you wrong. After all, she's been on MTV. What, what, you know? <laughs> you don't just get on MTV. You got to know what you're doing. Twenty-five dollars a month, really? you get all of this. You get a bonus episode, and you get an autographed copy of the Kwame Sutra. So that's a pretty sweet deal. And for sixty dollars a, a month, it's a good book. For sixty dollars a month, you get some of our sweet merchandise. In fact. I can't believe I forgot to do this. Mark, I brought you... I need you, one. I need one. I brought you um, something back from Ireland. Oh, really? That's perfectly appropriate for the show. It is a... Can you put uh, it in front of the camera so I can see yeah, it? I'm trying to put it in front of the camera. Did you, did you wow. What does that say? Soul Classic? Soul Classic. Okay. I got this for you at the Pennies on O'Connell Street. Is That's, that how much it cost? It cost... Let's see the tags on spared here. Spared no expense. It cost €3.50. Euro <laughs> but, but that's a four dollar shirt. Remember, the euro is worth more than a dollar. Yeah, it's about a five dollar shirt. That's it. So, so if you join at the sixty dollar month ridiculous. level, you'll get some great swag, like maybe this hey, T-shirt. There it is. There's a T-shirt. Okay. Aww. Or maybe this long sleeve T-shirt. Or maybe if we have some left in your size, a sweet. Ooh. There you go. ML Soul of Detroit hockey jersey in the blue. I mean, the, or the white. And Erica, you I mean, have we're like your showing them on the video is... of any of these fine products, whichever you like the best. We would like you to have this as our gift Aww. for being. Now you have to pretend you like one. For of them. Being a great, I have to yeah, a great like guest. One of them. <laughs> they're they're actually really cool. I love the and logo. because you're also a major influencer, so this may so we're branding. <laughs> As I hit my face. I'm right in the mic. With Erica out there. We're going to sell a bunch of this. Uh, this is, this is, this is, this no is pressure. guerrilla marketing. So, uh, so anyways, that's what you can get at $60 a month. That's our Handsome Devils level. Um, and you can just go to our website. There's a link to join up Patreon, the Soul Patrol. That's how you really support this show. And it keeps us coming back maybe for another... 250 episodes. Maybe that's not a good thing, but if you like the show, please support the show. And Erica, yeah, we got to have you back more often. I know you got lots going on, but uh, it's always great to have you. Thank you. I love, honestly, I love hanging out with you guys, whether we're talking about placentas, dead bodies, (laughs) I mean, or what a lovable dork you are. (laughs) You can drop the lovable. It was lovable. But but you're going to take the only thing I got going for me? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, it's true. It's true. And I would have been a bigger dork had yeah. I got into the National Honor. <laughs> of course, I was... Uh, full disclosure, I actually wasn't. I was not disallowed, unlike you. So spread out. Well, thanks for... You were in, in the Honor Society? National Honor Society, yeah. Thank you for I thought everybody me. was. I was not. Just kidding. Really? I don't know why I was. I think oh. it was one of those things my parents were like, you have to Did do it. Did you I'm stab like, somebody? I did nothing to get into it. I maybe filled out a form. I don't know. This might be this might be a whole other episode. Oh, bonus episode material. What? Okay, well, what does that mean? There's a story behind the story. I was good in college. You know, I got graduate of the year and like, alumni, oh, of, the alumni the year, of the year, the George year. Perot Award from high Wayne school. I barely graduated. I was not a great student either. It was mainly math that was what killed, and science. I just didn't like. I mean, uh, I didn't like going to class. And, no, no, no. Oh, God, yeah. no. And. 
We had an open campus. So did you guys yeah. did that? Was, oh yeah, it's the that's best. terrible. I went to Plymouth Canton, so it was oh, well, the biggest yeah, campus so in the you, world. You went to college, basically. Yeah, isn't there like three high schools on that? Yeah, campus? there were. There's three now, and and we had there were two at the time, Canton and Salem. Ah. So, but when I was there, you know, we had Canton and Salem, and then the portables. So sometimes I'd have be, have a class in a portable, and then I'd have my other class in third floor Salem and I'd have to walk in between whatever. That was not Did a big deal. Did you guys deal. ever rumble? <laughs> it, I, <laughs> high school Kenton wasn't. kids come over here again. We're going to give them some of that Salem witch shit. Some of the, there, there were some wild times over there. Really? Mm hmm. I never really think of that part of Wayne County as being, being uh, feisty, but I was I grew up on the east side of Canton, so oh, I go to one oh, street, and I was in right. Westland. West End boys and East End girls. I so got I wasn't on the west side of Canton. Okay, with the cake eaters, <laughs> you're on the other side of the mall. But <laughs> so said, it was it was an interesting the other side of IKEA experience. <laughs> okay, damn. Well, that's going to have to wait for a future episode yes. of ML Soul of Detroit. But thank you for listening. Thanks for being with us for 250 episodes. DJ Weiser recently listened to all 100, 250 episodes. We tried to have him on, but we understand that he is in an uh, institution right now getting support, and we hope that someday he'll be right again. So thank you, DJ Weiser. We're sorry. We're sorry for the deleterious effect that this show has had on you. But don't mainstream us, folks, little chunks. Check out our back catalog. Lots of great episodes. In fact, we'll put a link up to the last time Erica was on, which was a, another great episode. So thanks for being here. Mark, it's been great doing this. Sean, uh, any last words? I never I'm busy anything. changing in my uh, car right now. Can I ask a question? <laughs> uh, Do you question. think he's nude right now driving, trying to change his pants? Oh, God, we should have left 30 <laughs> seconds ago. <It's, laughs> you know he probably is, right? I don't want that image. The guy is so weird. I don't, I don't want that. <laughs> I image love him. Right. Gotta the, love him. He's the mouthful of placenta trying to pull oh! that hoodie over his head <laughs> as he's driving down 94 past all the orange barrels. Yeah. Well, Dusty May, you have no idea what's coming your way, but good luck, pal. You got a new best friend in Ann Arbor, and uh, FAU never looked so good in the rearview mirror. So uh, that's it for ML Soul Detroit. As, is, as you know, this is the part we turn to our friend Cyrus to ask us once again to take us out. Can you dig that? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? So the case of the state versus MLL became the case of the state versus Bobby Kilpatrick. Freddie's confession under fire isn't going to help Kilpatrick. You might sum up my whole case in one sentence. Sex and texting. Don't mix. But I'm not kidding myself. If Kilpatrick. I hadn't got panicky at the mention of the next witness, I might have gotten what he deserved. Just shows what a little nerve, some fast bluff, and somebody else's sense of guilt will do for you. You see, there is no elevator in my building. Expense account total $50.39 and more worry than you've got stockholders. Yours truly, M.L. Elric.